high grace how you write in bed. Oh, I don't know how to be bothered with such rubbish. Well, you'd be surprised at what you can learn from doing these, Madge. Stuart's too old for talks about sex. I think you're overreacting. Good old Stewie, eh? Bit of a late bloomer, but hey, he's got taste. It's all very well to make jokes, but it's very worrying. She's going out with Stuart. Don't give me a hard time because you couldn't get it up with Kirsty. often last to know until one day they don't get their fix and then woof instant withdrawal symptoms what symptoms like collapsing in the gym oh, but i fainted you said so that was before i realized the extent of your habit i told you i don't have a habit have a look at this list what do you have nearly every day uh, uh, custard squares but i can give them up i know i can what do you have with the custard squares? Oh, nothing. I'm not a total pig. What do you have to drink? Oh, just a coffee. Ah. Oh. And what's missing from the list the day you fainted? A coffee. Uh, that was because Kirsty told me I was drinking too much. You know, working in the coffee shop, it's always there. And how much do you normally drink? Well, I don't know. About ten cups a day. Yesterday it was fifteen. I was upset. Along with headaches, nausea uncontrollable tremors classic signs so it's true you're a caffeine addict i'll stop i'll kick the habit i'll become a tea person tea has caffeine in it as well all right then uh, fruit juice and lots of water and banana milkshakes banana milkshakes don't have caffeine do they tail don't go overboard in this you can't go cold turkey on it otherwise you get withdrawal symptoms again just cut back gradually start with weaker coffee and a few less cups a day i'll do it thanks dr ropata you saved my life Oh. Terrell, good lord, what have you done to yourself? Oh, it's nothing, Mum. I just thought I'd better see a doctor. Ow! Oh. I think you should. Who's free, Kirsty? Ah, uh, no one, but Dr. Fleming shouldn't be long. Okay. Yeah, I think it need a couple of stitches. Oh, what on earth happened? Brotherly love. Stuart lost his temper and smashed a plate across my head. He what? Stuart did. Mind your business. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Right in the middle of the coffee shop, you know. Just I went over there to talk to him about, you know, what's her name. Kirsty, you should be going to the bank, shouldn't you? But you told me to go later on. Well, I'm telling you to go now, so hurry up. Kirsty, I need to talk to you. Later, I've got to go to the bank. It's like really, really urgent. Well, can you come over to the coffee shop later? Okay. She could be such a bitch. So, what did he say? Tell me everything. <laughs> You're not going to like it. Oh, I don't expect to. Everything. I went over there to talk to him about, um, that girl. The things he said. What sort of things? Well, he treated it like it was one big joke, you know, like, uh, uh, he didn't care what anyone else thought. Oh, it's not like Stuart. I know. He's changed. And you know what he said? He said that... He said she was really hot, you know? that she'd do anything he wanted. So you think he, um, that they have been intimate? Yeah. I tried to talk to him about being responsible, you know, being careful. And that's when he got nasty. We started to argue, and that's when he hit me. Oh, Daryl. What am I going to do with him? I don't know, Mum. It's a worry. Hello there. What have you done to yourself? It looks nasty, and I think stitches, probably. Oh. No, no, no. Couple of strips. Stitches, I think. Sorry. It was an accident. Stuart, I don't understand. What on earth possessed you? Don't know. Felt good, though. Been wanting to do something like that for years. Why? He's just such slime. Me mum and dad think the sun shines out of his bum. And... If only they knew. Knew what? Well, what did he say to you? 
Kirsty's things, mainly about Kirsty. Oh. I know you're very fond of Kirsty, but I don't think she'd be wanting you to get into fights on her account. I didn't plan it to happen, you know. He just, he just keeps saying those things, and I, I just lost control. What sort of things? Just about me and Kirsty, and it doesn't matter. It might help to talk about it. Yeah. Well, thanks, but um, hey, we'll sort it out. What have we got, Tom? Coronary. Administered two doses of lignocaine intravenously. Persistent multifocal VPVs. Do we get the OV? His condition was still unstable after the initial dose of lignocaine. But you didn't liaise. There wasn't time. In my opinion... It's not a decision for a paramedic. Let's go, sir. Uh-uh. No, no, I I'll still be here. Yeah, OK, well, I'll see you later. Yeah. Love you. Ah, just the woman I want to see. Marge was in here before, totally distraught. Apparently you're the only thing between her son Daryl and certain death. A slight exaggeration. Apparently Stuart clobbered him with a plate. <laughs> you're kidding. How serious? Well, painful, but he didn't need any stitches. Well, they must have cheered you up seeing a drug rep bleed. Mm, Daryl's all right. I think so. Oh, then of course you two did get on very well the other night, didn't you? Purely on a professional level. Oh, of course. It's true. He's not overly pushy or out to impress or anything. I'm just helpful and quite straightforward. And trustworthy? I'd say so, yes. Well, then, take a look at this. What? That male infertility drug you and Daryl were so interested in. Testogen, the new one. <laughs> the only thing new about it is the name in the packaging. Basically, it's Bacridon, which, as you are no doubt aware, was taken off the market when it was linked to prostate cancer. What? Yep. Good old Daryl sucked you in a beauty. I talked to an infertile couple I knew yesterday. Oh, about the new miracle cure? Yeah. Well, uh, you better put them straight then. Then Daryl says he called him every name under the sun and smashed a plate over his head. <laughs> Stuart! This can't go on. You'll have to talk to him. What about? Well, what do you think? Him and her. Kirsty what they're up to. <laughs> they won't do any good. Oh, here we go again. Look, if you'd done what I asked in the first place and spoken to Stuart, this might never have happened. Oh, Tom. Tom, a word, please. Look, uh, ever since you've uh, come back to work, you seem to have forgotten where your job starts and ends. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but you're the ambulance officer and I'm the doctor. You can't just go ahead and do whatever you like without checking first. Listen. I've been in this job for over 20 years, and I'm And telling... you're very good at your job, but there are rules. And I know them as well as you do. But it's different in the field. Sometimes you've got to make split-second decisions. Well, I appreciate that. But you've got a radio. Use it. Hi. Kirsty, I'm glad you came. I saw Dr. Ropata this morning, and he, he told me what's wrong with me. What? Promise you won't tell anyone? Not if you don't want me to. I'm an addict. <gasps> like a junkie type addict? Uh-huh. I'm hooked on caffeine. That's why my hands have been shaking and I can't sleep and everything. So what? I told you you shouldn't drink so much coffee. Just give it up. I can't. Not all at once. I'll get cold turkeys. The worst thing is, is I might have to give up my job. Why? Because I'm working with the source of my addiction. Then drink herbal teas. I've got this one called the Jew of Tomorrow's Morning. It tastes like onions, but it's really good for you. Oh, my God. Kirsty. What? Girl, that was me, the one on crutches. What are you talking about? Remember this morning when we saw who were dead and you told me not to get all upset and to create a visualise instead? Uh huh. Well, I did. I, I tried imagining me with Jed, but I kept seeing her with him, so, so I visualised her having a serious accident. Oh, I want to die. Well, at least you didn't make a complete fool of yourself. Oh, don't be so hard on yourself. Daryl can be very convincing. Mm, and I can be very stupid. Hey, speaking of stupid, did uh, anyone check out Tom for brain damage after his accident? Why? Delusions of grandeur. I just had to give him a bit of a talking to about where his job ends and mine begins. Oh, I know what you mean. God save us from rampaging paramedics and know-it-all nurses. Hey, watch it. You heard that. See daisy easy. <laughs> G'day, stranger. Right. Mm. Well, see you all tomorrow. And thanks for that information, even if it did hurt.
What information is that? Oh, just some stuff on a new drug. You're here early, aren't you? Oh, I came in to see you. You were out jogging when I got home this morning. Yeah, when I got back, you were fast asleep. Mm. Anyway, how about we go over the road and you can buy me a coffee? Oh, I can't. I've already arranged to meet Martin. He's going to help me look for a new car. Oh. Do you have to? I want to. Uh, what sort of car? Oh, I don't know. Something interesting and sophisticated as befits my personality. Japanese. <laughs> European. I, uh, I'll see you in the morning. Have a good night. Oh, like ships that pass in the night. Hey, Stewie, mate. Mum tells me you punched out your brother. True? No, not really. <laughs> what happened? I hit him with a plate. Really? Why'd you do it? Oh, it's no big deal. I know why, anyway. Old lady can't keep secrets from me. It was about Kirsty, wasn't it? She told you, huh? No, not exactly, but you just did. So what did he say? It was nothing. No, of course not. So, um, what's the big story with you and Kirsty? Still getting on, okay? Yeah. How far have you got? I don't think that's any of your business. But you've done it, eh? Oh, come on, I'm your best mate, I'll tell you. Yeah, well, I wouldn't ask. I bet you would. Is she, you know, experienced? Um, no. Uh... Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Mum, just leave it alone. Honestly, Stuart, what on earth got into you? I want you to apologise to Daryl immediately. Well, you can stuff that! Stuart! And you can wipe that smile off your face, young man. Don't start. I can't afford to think bad thoughts about Frank. Something awful might happen to him. What do you mean? Oh, you know, my powers of uh, positive visualisation. Oh. Kirsty, what do you want? You know that girl who was with Jed over at the coffee shop? Mm hmm Did she come in here? Uh-huh. You didn't happen to get her name, did you? No, Marge took the details. Well, you, you couldn't look it up for me, could you? It's confidential. Oh, look, I don't want major details. I just want her last name. Please, Kirsty, for me, it's important. Gina. Don't you tell him. I won't, I promise. I think you saw Chris at about lunchtime. Was it Mrs. Crawford? Druid? How about Leary? Oh, I thought so. That's his last name. She must be his wife. Oh, bad luck. Oh, well, that's the way the crostini crumbles. Oh, hey, is uh, Dr. Ropatha around? I want to talk to him about my problem. Oh. He's an exam room, right? He should be free. Yeah, just go on through. I'm sure he won't mind. Uh, Alison, could you give the ECG machine a wipe down and check, please? Okay, I'll do it later. Not later now. Why? Is it urgent? No, but it needs doing, thank you. I did the quiz. Are you an addictive personality? And the answer is yes, 50 out of 15. Caffeine, chocolate, love, you name it, I'm addicted to it. Coffee's probably just the start. And uh, how many cups have you had today? A six, but they were only half strength. Hey, that's terrific. Keep cutting down, stay away from the hard stuff, and you're going to be fine. What about my uh, alcohol problem? I didn't know you had one. Do I ever? Half a glass of wine and I'm off my ear. If that's not a problem, what is? I see what you mean. It says here that some people may inherit their addiction. Well, Mum and Dad drink wine at every meal. Well, look, if you just stick to half a glass, I think everything will be fine. Was there something else? No. Not really. Are you sure? Well, yeah. I've got these amazing psychic powers. Like, they're really, really strong. But I guess that's just something I've got to deal with. Thanks, Doctor. Honey, well, he had no right talking to me like that. As if I didn't know the rules. I know I'm better than he does. I don't think it was the IV that upset him, Tom. It was more like the way you did it. Well, how do you mean? You know. No, I don't. Otherwise, I wouldn't be asking. It's just, since you came back to work, you've been a little bit pushy. Oh, well, thanks a lot, mate. I'm glad to know I got you to back me up. A67, clear home base. Roger, A67, your timeout is 1930 hours. Industrial accident, corner star and danger cruiser. Roger. About time we got a bit of action. Come on. Well, I'm quite happy to help Deirdre with the cake stall. Oh, that'll be him now. Stuart, is that you, dear? You see what I mean?
Stuart, we're in here. There's someone to see you. What are you? Father Rigby. Hello, Stuart. Your mother and I were just discussing our next church fate. You'll have gathered that my presence here and the sudden disappearance of your mother are somehow connected. Yeah, well, I guess that. Yes. She, um... She mentioned your immortal soul. <laughs> Did she? Indeed. Now, whenever a mother mentions a mortal soul, I know it has to be one of three things. Perjury? No, you're not a liar. Theft? No. Well, that just leaves the big one. Sex. Of course, I, I've sworn off all that. But if you'd like to tell me why your mother's giving you such a hard time, I might be able to help. Set her straight. Set her straight? Well, yes, of course. I mean, she's the one with the problem, isn't she? Yes, yeah, for sure. She just can't handle it. What, that you're having a, a sexual relationship with your girlfriend? No, that we're not. See, I've been going out with this girl, Kirsty. And she's a couple of years older than me, so everyone thinks that... We're but you're, you're sleeping together? Yeah. But we're not. And uh, your mother doesn't believe you? Everyone thinks we've been at it like rabbits. I mean... I really like her, but I feel I'm not ready. I just feel all this pressure though I have to. I and mean, it comes from my from my mates, my brother, and even my mum in a funny sort of a way. It doesn't sound stupid, huh? No. It's a little unusual, perhaps, but very mature and responsible. I'm sure when the time comes, you'll do the right thing. By yourself and this girl, huh? Kirsty. Yeah. I'd say she was a lucky girl. Thanks, Stuart. I've enjoyed our little chat. Uh, Father... What are you gonna tell Mum? To get off your back. <laughs> In the nicest possible way, of course. Bye-bye. <laughs> what are you doing? Anatomy. Yeah, I'm gonna take my advanced diploma one day. Hey! You took me to test you. No, I just want you to be quiet, please. Okay, I was only trying to be friendly. Well, don't. I've got a lot of work to do. Jackie, there's no rule that says we have to get on with each other, but it helps. <clears throat> Are you okay? Here we go. Two minutes. Let's get on well with each other. Okay. Um, no, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Look. I don't mean to be a pain, but I've got two assignments due this week. See? We're both victims of bad timing. I hate Carrie for putting me and Chris on opposite shifts. And look, I don't mind night duty. I mean, I can't get any study at home. Mum needs a hand, Dad's got the TV blasting, and my sister's carrying on about her latest boyfriend. It's hopeless. Mm. I'll tell you what. I'll look after the place tonight and you go for it. No, it's OK. Hey, I'm not doing it as a favour. How past the time. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I owe you one. Hey, Jenny, you missed the class. I had to work. Listen, Jed, I wanted to say something. I'm really, really sorry about your wife. Whoa, I know you're Hang on, hang on. Hang on. I'm, I'm not married. What about that girl you're with, the one on crutches? Well, it's Ellie's, my sister. Really? That's great! I mean, that's terrible. I mean, if I'd known, I would never have... What are you talking about? I... Your sister's accident. I, um, I visualised... Well, Ellie didn't have an accident. She just had an ingrown toenail removed. She did? Yeah. But I thought that... What? Oh, no. Nothing. Don't worry about it. Bye. Hey, Gina. Look, I've been meaning to ask you for a while. Would you like to have dinner with me tomorrow night? Yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> Have you right in a minute, mate. I'll get this into you first. His hand's caught in the press. It's jammed tight. Come on, guys. We'll be fine. Just give him a bit of space, OK? Yeah, this is fortune. It'll help with the pain. OK, everybody. Back to work. No, no. No machinery. Now, listen. If we undo these bolts, won't that release the pressure? I've tried that. The bolts are rusted. I can't move them. I love that bloody maintainer's contractor. Yeah, well, it's a bit late for that. OK, let's keep it quiet. Now, look. We're going to wind the machine back. We can release the pressure, OK? Ryan, we'll slow. Oh, stop! Stop! Okay. 
You're all right. You're all right. Calm down. You're all right. Sam. I'm going to have to put in the big guns. He's losing a lot of blood. Now, you liaise with base. We could be looking at an on-site amputation here. Okay, okay. Take it easy now. Yeah, that's for the page. Hello? Stuart, what happened today? Why didn't you come and see me? Uh, I was busy. I know you had a fight with Daryl. It was a family argument, okay? That's all. There's nothing important. Well, Nick said it was about me. Is that true? Not really. Look, I'm working late tonight. Why don't you come in and see me? We can talk about it. It's easier than on the phone. No, not tonight. Come on, it's really quiet. Look... I just need some time on my own, okay? Just to think things through. Well, what sort of things? Look, I'll give you a call tomorrow, okay? I can help you sort it out, Stuart. Please. Bye. Oh, I'll take care of the lolly trolley for you. Oh, you have to do that assignment, don't you? I've nearly finished. Hey, um, could you do me a favour? There's a new patient in private. Could you check up on him for me? Yeah, sure. Okay, thanks. <laughs> mm. We must say what we can. We'd better pull the arm back away from the press. We'll try that. It's caught. We'll try it again. Don't try we'll tear the fingers. Look, if we wind the machine forward, it'll free the release gear. No, that'll damage the hand even more. No, it won't. Look, it's jammed. It won't reverse. But if we wind it forward... Look, I've warned you about this before. You forget who the doctor is. No, I don't. You're the doctor and I respect that. But this is mechanical advice, not medical. Are you going to do it? Or are you going to argue about it all night?